Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory radio on this 2009 Cadillac Escalade. Now in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the radio. We'll head to the bench, show the new parts we're installing, including the radio, dash kit, and wire harness, and we'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Uh, most trim Escalades do come with bows. And so obviously we're going to retain that along with the steering wheel volume controls here. Now being that this is also a higher trim Escalade, we do have the factory rear seat entertainment, the RSC flip down screens that we will want to retain as well. Um, we have to pull out our center console. This trim has to come out and then the whole bezel around the radio comes next. Now I do have some panel trim removal tools. What we need to do is simply pop this out. Looks like this one's pretty loose already. But this will come on free here. Next here, this bezel has to come on out as well. Again, using a panel tool, what we're going to do is kind of work it on free. Just a couple of clips. I usually start on this side because your vent is on the other side. So I'm going to kind of just start from the bottom because I have some leverage. Using the same panel tool, we're going to slowly just start unsnapping clips up and around, just like so. Okay, you're going to have harnesses to disconnect. Most of these harnesses have a little pin you press in, and the harness comes free. Uh, the rest is held in with six, seven millimeter or nine thirty second screws. Uh, before we pull this out, make sure all the discs are out, especially in the CD changer. Now once you kind of get this up and out of the way, you're going to have quite a few harnesses on the back to disconnect. Same principle. Go ahead and disconnect each one by pressing in the little tab and it should come free. This is one heavy unit. So with our harnesses all disconnected here, at this point of time, let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, now the parts that we're using in today's install. First and foremost is the radio we've chosen to go with. Now, it's this Pioneer AVH-W4400NEX, features wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, DVD, CD, and what customers especially wanted is it has dual zone with a DVD player which that combination is slowly starting to disappear. So it's a good fit for this because they still want to use the DVD player with the two flip down screens in the rear. Now to install that, we need a bit of installation parts. We have this giant Metra kit specifically for Cadillac Escalades. It's the Metra 99-2007. This fits quite a few different trim Escalades from the ESV, EXT, and the STS. Um, for wiring here, we need the Pack Audio RP5 GM31 harness adapter. To keep the rear screens working, we need the GMR SAV by Access. And we do have a USB HDMI flush mount adapter, which we'll find a place to put this. So, what we're going to do is get everything pulled apart here. Today, we're going to be soldering our connections. We're going to grab the harness that came with the radio and the harness out of our pack interface. We're going to go ahead and prep those connections, solder and heat shrink, um, and uh, walk you through those connections. All right, so what we've done here is now we've grabbed the harness from our radio. We've stripped the ends back and grabbed the harness out of our pack module box. And essentially here, we got this all prepped and ready to go, so we kind of know the lengths of wire here. Now, this long strand will connect into our harness of our Pioneer. And then these ends, basically nowadays with major brands, it's going to be for the most part color for color. We'll always check the instructions and verify the function of the wire just to ensure that we don't accidentally make a mistake assuming the color matches. Once we uh, match those colors up, solder those connections, we'll move our heat shrink up and over those connections and we'll shrink them down with a heat gun. Now if you don't know how to solder, we recommend using um, at least buck connectors or even better crimp caps. Just don't use wire nuts or twist and tape, it's just not designed for an automotive application. All right, so we went ahead and made our connections here, and we are lucky in our case where everything happened to actually co correspond color to color. 
There was no special connections except for a mute wire is over here. Um, if your radio, like a Pioneer, has a mute wire, uh, they ask you to, uh, if you hit that OnStar button, if you don't cut the brown loop, it'll actually shut the radio off temporarily until OnStar shuts down. Not have that feature and actually use the mute wire, so we uh, connected our brown mute wire to the mute wire of the radio. Our blue wire, this doesn't support a power antenna, so we added our power antenna circuit just into accessory as well. We'll just tape that up. We're going to move our heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with a heat gun. All right, so we actually went ahead and taped it and just cleaned up our harnesses here. This end will plug into the vehicle, and then we kind of laid it out here on the bench so everything will plug in. Um, but in our case, we're using the... Metra AV harness GMR SAV allows us to uh, keep the RCA inputs on the back of the center console working. Those actually connect to our AV inputs of the radio. So that passes through and then the second harness is the uh, AV outputs that go to the screens. Those are right there and we actually connect it to the video output. Now one quick thing to note if you have two screens um, and when you plug this in and it's not working on your pack harness, there is a monitor to video input. Um, our Pioneer doesn't have two video outputs, so we just put a little splitter here that splits it from our rear monitor output into uh, two outputs. One that will go to our gray harness and then the other one that goes to our pack harness. So that'll keep both monitors working. Some circumstances, your Metro harness will keep both screens working. And we have a video on that, actually, that walks you through this process on how to retain it. Um, but if it's not working, you need this pack harness because it's pinned through this side and not this harness. This is our backup camera harness, this brown one. This will uh, retain the factory rear camera. And then there is a sub connection, so we just hook to the sub output, whether it does anything or not. Um, and then there's the center channel, and we hook it to the uh, front output of the radio. Just, uh, just in case that does impact how the center channel functions, we'll plug it in just in case. Um, that's, that's really about it. A little bit closer at the radio or connections here. Uh, we connected the steering wheel control input to the WR. This has dual zone, so there's a separate audio output for rear screens. Um, it's a 3.5 millimeter jack version, so we have an adapter here as well that goes from RCA to uh, AV 3.5 millimeter. Um, so this will allow us to play audio separately on those rear screens and headphones than up front, which is really nice, which is why specifically we went with this unit with the DVD player. So that's what we've done here. Got our all our connections. It looks like a ton. Now, before we plug this in, you always need to set your dip switches here. Your dip switches on your pack module are for steering wheel volume controls, and that hel helps the module know which radio this is paired to and how to program it correctly. Ours is our Pioneer, so we did dip switch 1, 2, and 3 as on, and uh, that allows us to keep those steering wheel volume controls working as normal. So this is all done. We're, we're good to go here. At this point of time, what we're going to do now is just unhook this end of the Pioneer. we got to get it mounted up into our dash kit. All right, so we got our radio mounted up in our dash kit here. There's little just two side wingies that clip in. And then we got our screws in. It looks great, honestly. Uh, they do give you an extra pocket here up above. So that really completes this portion of the radio. It does indicate that you do have to break off certain tabs based on the version Escalade that you have for your install. The easiest way to determine is, yeah, we can go through the instructions or grab the factory radio and see what lines up. Now, obviously, are these little outside wingies um, are ones that we're not going to use because we don't have them on our factory radio. We will use these ones. Then down here, there's a couple of different sets. And again, we're just going to match it up with the factory radio. Um, if you go through the instructions included with your kit, they're also going to tell you the kit assembly based on version of the Escalade that you have. With that done and out of the way and most of our harness all prepped, we're going to head to the car to start getting everything connected. Now one little cool addition we did, since this is a nice big open space, we added our little flash mount USB HDMI panel. Um, this one's a little bigger than the ones that we usually do. This is about a one inch hole. But that allowed us to do the dual USB ports on the front and the HDMI for the radio right there. 
versus cutting into any other part of the dash. But they plug right in to the back of the unit, HDMI and dual USB. So that turned out really nice. It took us a few minutes to get that mocked up. We don't want to scratch this front painted bezel. So take your time if you're going to do something like this. If you want dual USB, single USB, USB, HDMI, there's so many different combinations. We can link a few. All right, so we're back here in the Escalade. Now, there's just not a ton of space for us to install cables. Uh, this inner support piece is great. It keeps things rigid, but it's very limited on, on the space we have for all our cables. There's already a ton of OEM cables. Then you add all our harness adapters. There's just not gonna be enough for us to fit everything in. So uh, we have a multi-tool. We're just gonna do a little trimming on the inside because there's a ton of space on each side of our radio cavity. So we're just going to just cut a little bit in. We want to keep some of this rigidity here, um, but we just need more space for harnesses. So we're probably not going to cut this whole inner piece out just a little bit where it gives us a little bit more wiggle room here. Um, but in the end, that's going to help us out a ton. So, we got a lot of connections here. Let's go ahead and start making them. Gray goes to gray, brown goes to brown. Pre-programmed everything, so now, let's just go ahead and start working it away from the radio. And we have the space to seat the radio fully without smashing any harnesses. Got our antenna all connected. So we got everything back together. It's looking great. Uh, this actually turned out fantastic. Uh, looks really good. The radio does poke out a little bit just to give you enough space back behind the radio uh, for a full size doubled in to get everything to fit properly. So just be aware of that. It sticks out just a hair. A little USB HDMI flush mount looks great. It all went in really, really nicely here. Um, factory backup camera is working great. And uh, stereo and volume controls are working great. Volume up, volume down. Uh, this has wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, a fully loaded unit. Um, the rear screens are working. So right now we have a test DVD in, we got Contagion going. If we go back here, it's working on the rear screens. Both rear screens are confirmed working. Looking really nice. So that's about it for this install. We'll link all the parts we use and we'll recommend in the description for you based on your trim level Escalade. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. If you wanna see the Suburban Tahoe version, we can link that video also in the description. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.